tracking this California storm and how it's going to impact the early start to our holiday travel. I'm ABC 10 Chief Meteorologist Monica Woods in Sacramento, tracking everything not only through the state, but throughout the West and the rest of the country. Our weekend travel, if you are getting a jump start on that holiday travel for Friday, rain and thunderstorms throughout almost the entire state. Same for Saturday. And the big thing that's going to shift is that changing snow level. We're going to see that fluctuating, starting high in the day, lowering during the evening, Get ready for changing conditions and possible chain controls. Back to dry weather, though, on Sunday with mild conditions. But this big system that's been parked off the coast is finally starting to edge its way inland. With it, it's bringing areas of periods of heavy rain as well as snow for the Sierra. Now, the snow line has been fairly high, up about 8,000 feet with very little chain controls in effect. That will shift periodically in the overnight hours as that colder air starts to work its way in. Earlier today, grab this snapshot across the state. San Francisco, clouds hanging low. You can see beautiful conditions, though, across the bay are areas of showers on and off. Now, it was really difficult visibility in Los Angeles with areas of rain. Mount Shasta rain just off to the uh, south. Mount Shasta, by the way, is up towards Redding, closer to the California Oregon border. And then for Blue Canyon, as we make our way up towards the Sierra, we're seeing periods of on and off rain as well as cloud cover throughout the day. But again, the biggest rain is yet to come. Our totals are fairly weak, only about one one hundredth of an inch of rain throughout the 8050 corridor. South Lake Tahoe totaling about a tenth of an inch. We're still seeing areas of rain, though, so expect to see some higher totals later tonight. And then we picked up less than a tenth of an inch throughout the northern San Joaquin Valley. So although we have been seeing on and off rain throughout the day. Not much going in the rain bucket yet. Just about a trace or so. As far as the rain bands, though, they are coming in from off the coast. And there's some heavier rain embedded in all of this. Snow expected for this year again on and off. The biggest change that we're seeing with this particular system is how high that snow line is. So we're not really seeing the big impacts with chain controls and delays up top for the Sierra. Even road closures could see some spin out. So that's always a possibility. Here's a little closer perspective. And what's odd is we're not used to this coming from the south, moving its way north. Typically, our weather systems kind of crash in through the northwest corner of the state and then drive its way south and off to the east. But since this system is sitting just off the coast and kind of pulling in that moisture from the south up to the north, that's how the, uh, the rain is going to develop throughout tonight and tomorrow. Again, the snow line has been fairly high. Lots of warm air associated with this particular weather system. I know it doesn't feel that warm outside, but believe it or not, that snow line is really struggling to make it down the hill here. We'll still see some light accumulation. It's just not the biggest snow producer for us. Here's where that system sits right now. You can see it, that counterclockwise circulation just off in the Pacific here. That has yet to move inland. The biggest bulk of our rain and snow hits on Friday night through Saturday. So here's the active weather timeline. What's left of it, Thursday, chance of showers on and off through the day with that snow level about 8,000 to 8,500 feet, heavier rain and snow, even some thunderstorms on Friday. And then Saturday, chance of thunderstorms as well. That snow level lowering below the passes. We'll see some colder air work in and that will help to add to some instability as well as lowering that snow line. Again, back to mostly sunny skies on Sunday. Good travel day and warmer. Perhaps you're going to be doing some decorating or even cleaning up the yard if you're planning to have family and friends over next week for, for the holiday. Our snow level changes unfold like this right around 7,800 to 8,200 feet heading into our Wednesday evening. Thursday, still well above the passes, about 8,300 to 80. Uh, 500 feet on the 8050 corridor, a little bit lower south of Highway 50, but overall this will give you a general sense of what we're expecting about 8000 to 8200 feet early in the day on Saturday and then it comes crashing below the passes, but not super low. So it's not like we're going to be chaining up at like 5000 5500 feet. Instead, you got to get almost to the passes before we're going to see the potential for those chain controls. So as far as our model snowfall totals, it's still really slim pickings here for snow totals, about an inch to three inches total.
by the time we get to Saturday evening before this system kicks on out of here. Rain a little bit better here, about a half an inch or so throughout the valley and the foothills. Some areas closing in on about an inch. And again, that doesn't even include what we've seen so far, which hasn't been much. But again, this isn't going to be that huge rain producer for us either. As far as the on and off showers, they will continue into our Thursday forecast. And then we start to see a bit of clearing early Friday before the big push inland of that low. And that's what's going to take us into our Friday night for Friday night football, as well as our Saturday. I know we've got the Causeway Classic, which is UC Davis and Sac State at Hornet Stadium in Sacramento on Saturday. That's a big game. Should start to see some clearing during the middle part of the late afternoon and then into the early evening before this is all out of here and that high pressure ridge will return with dry and warming weather ahead for the forecast. Now, if you are traveling this weekend, this is how things are looking out of Sacramento International. We've got some destinations that will have your connections. Uh, for Seattle on Saturday, we're going to see the rain. This is pretty much a system that's affecting much of the West Coast, but Denver, Dallas, Minneapolis, Chicago, even Atlanta, Looking at dry conditions, Charlotte will see early morning showers as well as JFK, but then afternoon clearing. So if you're headed out in the morning, things might actually be okay. Headed eastbound. For Sunday, we shift things around ever so slightly. There's really not too many changes. Seattle will see some early morning showers. Denver, late day showers. Chance of thunderstorms for Dallas. So that's going to be kind of the hot spot to look at if your uh, travel plans take you either into Dallas or through Dallas on Sunday. Other than that, Minneapolis, Chicago, Atlanta, Charlotte, JFK, all sunny skies on Sunday. I can't say that that's necessarily going to hold though through next week and we're going to unpack that in just a moment, but we are eight days in counting until Thanksgiving. It's just kind of the big countdown here through the end of the year, 36 days from the winter solstice, Christmas Day, 40 days away, followed Right after that, bringing in the new year, 47 days away. So we're likely warmer in the forecast next week for the West Coast. It's going to be cooler than average across the eastern part of the country. You can see we're starting to dry out here after what's been kind of the on and off showery pattern across the West. And instead, that's going to shift its way eastward throughout the course of the week with likely wetter conditions next week for much of the eastern part of the country extending from the Great Lakes to the deep south and then through the mid Atlantic and even the eastern seaboard there for next week. Here's how this is all unfolding. So we get through our Friday forecast with areas of rain likely through the Great Lakes and parts of the eastern seaboard there. As far as the rain showers again, they will taper off temporarily for the west coast only to pick back up again on Saturday. So you can see if your travel plans take you by car or even by plane through the state of California, it is going to be rather wet here on Saturday. Showers will start to exit the east coast as we head into our Saturday late day forecast and it's nice throughout the Great Lakes as well as the plains all the way through Texas as well. Should be some pretty beautiful weather to kick off the weekend. As we head into our Sunday forecast, we start to see a little shift in this pattern. Our system starts to push its way eastward here. So for the Intermountain West, we'll see areas of snow showers extending through Montana as well as Idaho and then through portions of Colorado, uh, almost into Denver. Eastern half of the country kind of hit and miss showers here throughout New England with some snow showers, but mostly New York, Washington, dry, as well as Atlanta. Again, travel plans for Sunday don't look terrible. But for Monday, you can see how we're starting to see this main complex develop here. And that's where we have on that Sunday forecast the chance of thunderstorms in Dallas for the afternoon because of that line really developing. More snow for the Intermountain West as it moves through the Central Plains. And then for the eastern half of the country, we will be seeing very dry conditions for the morning, but then that storm system starts to move its way east. I should mention across the West Coast, look at this. We head into Monday and Tuesday with dry weather. By our Wednesday forecast, Pacific Northwest will start to see some of those showers redeveloping. And there's that system making its way through the Great Lakes, the deep south. This could be a bit of a difficult travel day, not only for the Great Lakes uh, into Chicago, but also for Minneapolis. Just kind of a heads up if your travel plans take you there. I know we're really starting to edge into that time frame where we start to see some of that bigger air travel coming uh, coast to coast. And then for Wednesday, 
center of the country looking pretty good as well as most of the west coast except for the pacific northwest starting to see some of those snow showers same for the great lakes there's that cooler than average pattern starting to develop and there's the rain across the mid-atlantic states all the way through parts of new england but again that colder air trying to work its way in so that's going to be a forecast to watch all the way through Thanksgiving, oh, burr. <laughs> this is going to be a cold one through the Great Lakes. And then for the Intermountain West, more snow there. Kind of good news here uh, for Thanksgiving. Some folks like to have that uh, morning uh, morning ski run and then have that meal or vice versa. Kind of get their meal in and then hit the slopes for the midday hours. So some kind of good news there. I know uh, some of us like the dry weather to get out and about and have some kind of recreation. Pacific Northwest kind of some hit and miss showers there for Thanksgiving Day. For Friday, we're back to the snowy weather for the Inner Mountain West, some showers for Houston, and then for the Great Lakes, just the upper Great Lakes, we'll see a few showers. Showers continuing, by the way, through the Pacific Northwest into our Friday forecast. But again, for Friday travel throughout the state of California, we are looking dry and mild some really nice conditions here there's so much travel that happens north to south throughout the state even into saturday looking dry and the pacific northwest finally starting to dry out here some more snow showers for the uh, northern rockies as well as parts of the great lakes extending all the way into almost the southern parts of the great lakes now we will head have another busy travel day on Sunday, I know, and we'll be tracking that, continuing to give you these extended forecasts. As far as our local conditions, back to our regional outlook for California. Highs near 50 for the Tahoe Basin. 60s down the hill for that Thursday forecast. We're in the 60s along the coast with areas of on and off rain continuing. Just kind of one of those fall days with mild temperatures, on and off rain showers and the cloud cover. We start to clear out by Sunday. Unfortunately for the mountains, we're not going to see that huge snow producer for us. Instead, it's going to be very likely mostly rain. So the ski resort's kind of struggling here to get some of that natural snowpack going. In the hills, we're looking at on and off rain through Saturday and same for the coast. And by Sunday, we're pulling in some of that fog. Just be aware of that if travel plans take you to the Bay Area. Here's a look at that 10 day forecast. So rain on and off on Thursday, chance of thunderstorms Friday and Saturday drawing out and a mild forecast through Thanksgiving week. And for the big shopping day on Friday, our temperatures will be quite nice to get out and about if you're heading out to any of those outdoor malls. Our weather playlist includes in-depth forecasts and weather specials, mega flood, water wasted, and the California drought series on our ABC 10 app. You can download that for free on Apple TV, Roku, and Fire TV. Hope you have a great day.